I definitely think of myself as a writer, which I think is a um, pretty important step to take. I've uh, started to think about writing as a vocation, as, as something that I could pursue as a career. Um, but also as something that's enjoyable. I've found it incredibly fun. And I think maybe that's something that people might not be aware of before starting um, a program of serious writing, that it can be very personally rewarding, fulfilling. I actually uh, consider myself a writer now. I didn't really, before I started the program, it was more, um, well, I want to be a writer. Um, and as far as uh, how others see me, I, I hear that question and I think more how the people I'm surrounded with, um, it's one of those things where you tell people, well, I'd really like to write, and you feel like what you get back is kind of, mm, yeah, wouldn't we all, you know, I want to be a dancer. Um, but studying creative writing um, and studying creative writing at Cambridge, um, I feel like it's brought this level of legitimacy to everything where now it's, you know, other people see me as a writer as well instead of somebody who just talks about it. In our class we have a great combination of people from all sorts of, uh, well, all parts of the world and becoming familiar with uh, those writers' voices um, and everybody brings a, a slight you know, cultural perspective of, of where they come from that can be found in their work and I, I think that's exciting, it's invigorating and, and yeah, it's inspiring. The benefit of writing uh, with other writers from around the world actually and a range of ages has been uh, extraordinary. I know from a prior existence that if you get a group of people with the same background or geographical location uh, you get a certain amount of creativity out when you put them together but when you broaden uh, the age range and the cultural uh, experience you get a mushrooming and a flowering so everybody approaches things in the room in a, in a different way and you think to yourself, where on earth did that come from when you hear something that someone else has written? Because you know it would never have occurred to you to do it. And what it does, of course, is to challenge you to think about uh, what you're writing. I came into the course thinking, OK, I'm just glad poetry's first so we can get it out of the way. Um, and it was just this eye-opening experience. Um, I enjoyed poetry so much more. Um, when we finished the module, and I really enjoyed writing poetry um, after, you know, after listening to it in, in class. So I, you know, I thought the poetry module was fantastic. I loved the poetry module because uh, I hadn't really got the point of poetry at all. It might sound faintly blasphemous, um, but to listen to one of the tutors taking us through a Shakespeare sonnet was like. Uh, a eureka moment for me. It was, ah, now I get it. It's the power of metaphor to express meaning in a way that prosaic language doesn't had somehow escaped me for 56 years. And there it was all of a sudden in front of me. And it was so exciting. Well, I enjoyed two. There's sort of very, a very close tie between poetry and creative nonfiction, which were the two I thought I'd be least interested in. They actually turned out to be two, the two I found I got most benefit from. Um, but I'd say, I have to say creative nonfiction probably had the edge because um, it was uh, very interesting to me to, um, to, uh, to learn how to apply the processes one would associate with fiction um, to relating events from real life and in particular how to order your memories so that they take some kind of narrative shape. Um, and that you know, narrative shape is the way you tell the story. I, I found that c completely fascinating. I really enjoyed Wendy Cope. I am a fan of her work, so it was a real thrill to have her come and read her work. The highlight for me was, was Sir Michael Holroyd. And there was just something about the humanity and experience of the man and the way that he's found some place of resolution in his own life that was uplifting and inspiring and hugely encouraging. I really enjoyed Adam Mars Jones. Um, he was very, um, he was very entertaining, he, he was great to listen to, and he had some great perspectives about um, drawing from your personal experience in your writing, 
And also he does a lot of work as a critic, so hearing him talk from that perspective was very helpful as well. And then from a purely practical standpoint, during our last module, um, a couple people from the publishing industry came in and spoke to us. And that was exceedingly helpful, um, just to give us an idea of, of how the industry works and what kind of writing you know, different publishing companies are looking for. So I enjoyed all of those. Before the program, I couldn't have imagined having been published at all. Um, but in fact, two of the short stories that I've written on the program do appear on a website that people have to pay for in order to download. And I'm pleased about that. Um, but I've written a play that I hope will be produced. And if you'd said to me, um, yeah, that might have happened a couple of years ago, I would have laughed at you with good reason. So it's improved my chances of publication dramatically. Well, I have actually been published once since starting the programme, so I, I was um, delighted to be shortlisted for the Bath Short Story Award uh, during my first year, and that I've been published in that anthology. I've had a couple of poems published as well, um, and I, I can only hope that will continue. I'll continue to work as hard as I have been doing uh, in the hopes that more publication will come. I started a novel um, during my first year as part of my as part of the fiction module and as my dissertation in the second year and submitted the beginning of it um, for the Bridport Prize uh, for a first novel and I was long listed which was wonderful and um, since then I've had a few flash fiction pieces and one poem published. <laughs>